Hi, this is Jason Coddington with Coddington Wealth Advisors, and we're pleased to uh, share with you our outlook 2021 for the financial markets uh, next year. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started with that and uh, take a brief view on what we see moving forward for 2021. So first off, you know, as we look, it's basically a new start. In 2019, we were headed into 2020 really strong. We had a strong economy good corporate earnings, and then of course, COVID-19 occurred. And with that came lockdowns and a halt to the economy, high unemployment, you know, stagnation in the gross domestic product, and basically our economy took a big shock. So now, as we've seen, the financial markets um, have rebounded and the economy also is starting to gain traction. And we're likely to see more of that traction with the onset of a new vaccine. So as we look at that, we're basically now, from an economic standpoint, in an expansion. And so we'll review real quick what that might look like. The average expansion typically runs uh, 5.3 years. And since our you know, summer of 2020 is when we started our expansion, and so who knows what that might look like. The most recent expansion, which began in July of 2009, lasted 10.7 years, one of the largest uh, and longest times uh, in history. So hopefully, you know, looking forward that we can continue to have a growing economic expansion here uh, in the United States for years to come. Moving forward, here's kind of our forecast for, you know, 2021. If we look back though, in 2019, our real GDP was forecasted to grow at 2.2%. And for 2020, it looks like it's going to be down about 4%. What's nice is that as we look for 2021, we're projecting a 4 to 4.5% growth in the United States. Outside the United States, if we were to look at, you know, the developed world, out, you know, with outside of the United, not including the United States, we're looking at potentially, you know, they had a pretty bad hit in, you know, in 2020. They're also forecasting a 3.75 to 4.25% growth. Emerging markets uh, didn't get hurt as bad uh, in 2020, and their forecasted growth is about 5 to 5.5%. So that's encouraging news. So for the stock markets uh, around the world, as we look for growth uh, in the economies, that's, we have a growth forecast going into 2021. And the next piece that's also important is inflation uh, also looks to be very low. And going into 2019, it was 1.8%. In 2020, it dropped to 1.2%. And in 2021, as the economy picks up, we might see that rise a little bit to one9 but still historically low, which is good uh, overall for stocks. Next, we'll just move on to the stock market and take a look at you know what we might learn. The earnings have been good for stocks and they've rebounded and we're looking for gains perhaps in 2021. So with that, uh, in 2020, you can see that the forecasted estimate for the end of 2020 was 3,500. Today, as of this discussion, it's December um, 11th, and uh, the S&P 500 closed right around 3,600. So you can see that you know the fair value index is relatively close right now and is on target. As we look to 2021, we forecast a, you know an S&P fair value ending at anywhere from 3,850 to 3,900. So still growth uh, to move forward into 2021. The estimated earnings per share, currently 133, uh, based on a fact set consensus estimate, uh, is forecast to be 165 as we move forward. That's important because if earnings grow, along with stock market growth, that tends to help be less of a bubble or less of a pullback. Um, so the fact that earnings are growing along with the forecast is good. And something else that's very interesting is the 10-year Treasury yield is also at historic lows. Uh, it was forecasted in 2020 at 1% to 1.5, and currently in 2021, we're forecasting one and a quarter to 1.75%. So interest rates on 10-year Treasury yield, you know, is going to be low. We see that, uh, you know, don't expect to make a whole lot of money on your savings accounts or cash. Um, and we also see mortgage rates uh, staying low as well. That's also good for economic activity and stocks in general. Uh, as you can see here, uh, earnings are again poised for a sharp rebound in 2021 and forecasted into 2022. 
If you see the graph here from 2019 to 2020, there was a drop, um, but as we move forward, uh, they are forecasted to increase from 2020 to 2021, and then even more estimates by 25% increase in earnings over uh, the next few years. So that being said, that's also good for stocks. So what drives stock prices in the long run are earnings. And so if earnings are forecasted to go up, it's likely that stocks will fall. So now we'll, we'll switch gears a little bit and talk about bonds. And bonds, their job is, is always just to kind of stay in their lane and to not use bonds as you know, capital appreciation or speculative investments, but more for stability and for income. But we'll talk about how that income has been hampered a little bit by economic activity. So let's look at the, uh, the 10-year treasury yields. Uh, the 10-year treasury yields, typically when there's been a drop like there has this year, um, there was a significant drop this year, uh, as you can see uh, by the graph here, you know, almost a 2% you know, drop in the treasury yield. We will likely see that uh, the treasury yield will, will increase. Don't have an, you know, don't have an exact you know, forecast on that. The historical average has been about 0.9 uh, basis points. And of course, that, is, that would give us um, the forecast we have, which we shared on the earlier screen, where we see the 10-year treasury hovering about 1.75% this time next year. Still historically low. So again, that's, uh, that's good for stocks, but not so much so good if you're um, a bond investor looking just for income. So with that, we've had to look at you know, some different alternatives. So we'll move on. So what kind of bonds uh, typically help out? One thing that's been nice is if you did have bonds in your portfolio in 2020, they did help you out. And so if we were to look, you know, the S&P 500, you know, in April, in, from February 19th to March 23rd, there's a 33% drop in the S&P 500. And uh, the bond index during that same time only lost, you know, 0.9% percent so less than a percent drop and so bonds did their thing and that's uh, that's why we have bonds in the portfolio so still even though the economic forecast looks good stocks look good going forward there still might be a place for bonds in your portfolio as a buffer against volatility and we see that going forward in 2021 so as we move forward and looking forward the journey continues your long-term goals your long-term Investment strategies are still in place. 2020 has proven to be, you know, a very difficult year. However, you know, with a 30% drop and then a 60% recovery, to expect that the markets would be where they were uh, now, uh, based on where we were in March, is quite extraordinary. Still a long way to go. A lot of adversity probably ahead. However, uh, earnings are poised to continue to grow, and that's that seems to be positive. But irrespective of the political climate we might be in, the economic environment we might be in, interest rates or earnings, it's always important to remember some facets of that are they're steady and true, regardless of the journey or the, that we're on. So one is, is to stay invested and just stay the course. Number two is keep investing. Don't stop investing. Three, be diversified. As we've shown in these graphs here, don't have all your eggs in one basket. Having some bonds and some stocks will you know, reduce volatility in your portfolio. Rebalance, probably no other year, at least in my 25 year career, uh, has there been more importance on rebalancing than 2020. Um, and so what that means is you know, reallocating your portfolios when they get out of alignment. So rebalancing is very important, so to continue to do that. And number five, most important is before you make any dramatic changes, always revisit your goals uh, about the portfolio or about your investments before you make a, you know, a knee-jerk reaction or a change. Sometimes doing nothing is something. And as Warren Buffett once said, the investor's chief enemy is often himself. So with that being said, thank you. Look forward to working with you in 2021. And uh, thanks for listening.